Um, back issues. I like Blink. She's from the Exiles, and this is one of her four her miniseries. It's number one. Nothing amazing about it, so I picked it up. I think it was only a dollar or two. Um, in this series, she hooks up with an Nihilus, right? Crazy. <laughs> Uh, really early Inhumans. I'm a big fan of the Inhumans. Um, and when it's experienced sellers and collectors, they can give you an idea of what condition the issue is in, so you don't have to guess for yourself. They'll inspect it, and so they'll uh, uh, tag it and say if it's fine, very fine, near mint, because they want to give you an honest price to sell, because if not, you're going to sit the next show and complain and give them a hard time. Um, so. You know, I know that I'm paying for number one, and it's uh, uh, very good to, to find. And they wanted like seven bucks for it. Uh, I wasn't really going to argue, cause just because I'm a fan of them. It's not really one that I was like looking to flip or resell or like uh, get for a weird purpose. And then humans are fighting Blastar, who's usually like a negative zone, uh, uh, Fantastic Four bad guy. Um, and I've gotten stuff like this before. Uh, a classic. Nick Fury cover, um, like people might complain about the art and say it's a little wonky or like the, the, the anatomy is off. I don't care. Huh? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's original Steranko. I mean, you can't get better than Steranko Nick Fury. Um, it's really early uh, Nick Fury of S.H.I.E.L.D. as is this one. And it's one of those things where sometimes you get stuff just because the covers are iconic. They're really neat covers. Um, as you can, I'm not willing to take this out of the bag just yet for the video. Sorry, uh, but <laughs> I and the stickers aren't on them either. They're definitely. <laughs> I probably paid the sticker price for this one. That was forty bucks. I said thought it said four hundred for a second. <laughs> no, it's not four hundred. <laughs> this one I paid more than that for. But that's because, like I'm a fan of Nick Fury. It's classic Stranko. I'm a huge fan of Stranko, um, and it's one of those ones that you could put up on display as art. Uh, it's. It's what it is. These guys had to make art month by month. They didn't have like, you know, time to take and make sure it was perfect. They had to get it out to the printers, and uh, and so it's. I really like it. That's really cool. So, um, sometimes if it's something you like, because you just want to keep it, you you pay the extra dollar. It's not always about getting the best deal. On to another. Speak of getting the best deal, on to another flea market. Um, more uh, more recent than humans. It's probably from more of like the 80s. Uh, it's one of those ones. It's a little bent, but that's because it's a flea market. If someone carries it in, carries it back out, it's not preserved. It's not in a good box. I didn't pay much for it, but you know, one of those things that you you like it. They're, they're fighting uh, alpha primitives for some reason. Strange. Um, I found a Miracle Man. Uh, these were getting reprinted by Marvel, so I figured the old, the old original issues might pick up some value. We'll see. I haven't really checked recently. I haven't gotten around to them. Um, it's not great condition, but it might be something. It's one of those things where, like, I recognize the title, and I know it's rare, so I'll give it a shot and drop, like, whatever the flea market price might be. And I'm not, I wasn't really concerned about that. Um, uh, and sometimes it's not so much about the art, it's about the story. Uh, stray Bullets is um, up there on my list of books that tell really good stories. Sometimes they're disturbing. And I got all of these for maybe, you know, like three bucks or so, a dollar a piece, I think. Uh, just because the story's messed up enough, um, weird stuff happens. And it's also a thing that I would loan out to friends. It's like, you, do you want to read something that's not like your classic uh, guys in tights and superheroes? Uh, it's different from that. Uh, one of the stories quite literally is a stray bullet and how that affects other people. Um, and I, f I was able to pick up a, a cheap Angela number one. I didn't know she had her own series briefly. Um, I don't really care about Angela. It doesn't really uh, bother me. But uh, at a different flea market, I was able to find her first appearance that someone had easily 30 of and uh, and I don't have a, a phone that could do anything fancy like look stuff up so I was texting and calling JR and being like what was Angela's first appearance and he's like let me look it up it's number nine 
what's it worth right now? Uh, it's selling for like $4 or $15, it depends. Um, so I ended up buying uh, the stack for $2. And I've been selling them ever since here and there because I... It and was gifting. <laughs> and gifting, <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, because I got some help with knowledge. Uh, but this is around the time where uh, there was the court case between Neil Gaiman and, and, uh, and Todd McFarlane, and Todd doesn't own Angela anymore. Neil Gaiman brought her to Marvel, and now Marvel has her. And Marvel put her in Asgard and put her on Guardians of the Galaxy. So I figured it's the perfect time. So at some point, I'll sell these together and see if I can get more than $11 for them. <laughs> but it's one of those things, it's like, I happen to see it, and I made an offer, and, you know, like, you don't have to flood the market right away, but if, you, if you're, uh, 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 nifty, crafty, whatever, I can't think of the word, anyway, if you're a clever seller, um, you make, you know, your few bucks a month off of them, whatever, hold on to them for a while, more stuff will happen later on. And then, lastly, I found this. Uh, it's Rising Stars. Uh, it's issue number five. Um, J. Michael Straczynski uh, is the writer. He's done a lot of cool stuff. He started way about Babylon 5. And uh, has done a lot of comics since then. A huge run on Spider-Man. Um, and it's like, it's not really a key issue. Uh, when I get some of these books, it's because something they do something innovative and really neat with them. And I want to document that. And it's this page. Because uh, in the story, there's all these people that have superpowers. They start dying. Someone's killing them. They have to figure out why. And this is one of the guys that has gotten powers from the mysterious thing. Um, and even though I have the trade, I still wanted the single issue. Just because of how interesting it is. And how Straczynski likes to play tricks on you. And he tries to, to like show you new things. So it looks like nothing. On this page, we have uh, like grayed out people and word bubbles that you can't read. So, you got it? Uh, we're getting there. A little more to the light. There it is. So it's a trick. You have to like play with your comic, light box it essentially, look through it, and it's the character with all the ghosts talking to him. Because his power is talking to ghosts. And this is how Straczynski decided to write that effect in and make a story happen. And it's more than just reading the issue. You have to now, like, interact more with the book than just turning pages. Um, so I got this based on that fact of, like, it's something innovative. This was done back in early 2000s, maybe late 90s. And, uh, and it's, I would like to see more of this done. Uh, it, it wasn't, like, just a one-time gimmick. It's interesting and like made you uh, deal with it more and like it was more introspective. So, uh, yeah, that's mm. all I got for now. Pull it away from the light so we can see what it. <laughs> Crazy. Yep. Yeah.